Hey everyone, this is Hollander Cooper with GamesRadar.com here with TJ Hafer, PC Gamer, and Rob Hill from Tryon. And we're checking out Defiance, which is an upcoming MMO shooter uh, coming out on all on PC, Xbox 360, and PS3. And right now we're kind of just uh, walking in the open world. Can you give us a little background while we actually get to the mission? Yeah, so essentially um, you mentioned that it is a co-op third-person shooter, but it takes place in San Francisco, and it's a heavily terraformed San Francisco. So essentially aliens came when they found out that their solar system was going to be destroyed. The only place they found to go was Earth, not realizing that we were already here. So they show up in modern-day Earth and kind of negotiate, try to negotiate colonization rights, which they do because the humans want their technology, and make a long story short, things kind of break down, and wars start, and the terraforming engines that they brought, thinking that they were going to terraform the planet, kind of got activated on their own, and their ships got destroyed, raid down on Earth. Anyway, so the huge destruction on the planet, where the game and the show take place, are is just after that. It's a period of regrowth. You start to see alien things grow, human things regrow. You see this weird mixture of uh, creatures, like these cyborgs here. They were miners that just went crazy with cybernetics, and that's what he's fighting right now. So, um, so you said he's fighting uh, like cyborgs in Port Stinson. It says. Um, so, how did he get this mission? Did he have to go somewhere to get it? I mean, like, how's the MMO side actually work? There's multiple ways to get missions. You can get it uh, either from a, a non-player character, you know, uh, just they, they exist in the world, or you can get them and complete them just while you're out in the field. You don't always have to run to an, to a, to a character in order to get them. Right now, what you can see real quick is he picked up what we call a super weapon. This is called the Reaper. And essentially, it's tied to this mission. He picks it up. It's a rapid-fire weapon. If he runs out of ammo, it drops and he's done. He can't get new ammo for it. So it's really just something to give, up, give him some really temporary heavy firepower. Now, his character looks a little uh, goofy, just in, in, in a good way. So, uh, but it's obviously not a human. You can play as an alien called a Narathian. And that's one of seven species that came down from the solar system I mentioned. And he decided to play this character. Now, it doesn't mean that he's a bad guy or a good guy. Essentially, the, all the player characters, both human and Arathian, are mercenaries. And that kind of tells you what the world is. The world is not aliens versus humans. It's essentially, after all this destruction, aliens and humans decide, okay, we got to work together. The problem is there's all these other people like these cyborgs or hellbugs, which are these crazy, crazy alien you know, creatures, and a bunch of different other groups that just don't want to get on that program. And so you're hired as a mercenary to go out and deal with these, these different groups. So Ego Upgrade Awarded just flashed on the screen. What is Ego? Yeah, Ego is essentially an implant, and it's actually very rare. But the person that hired you, Von Bach, he is essentially a weapons manufacturer. And he's hired you to come to the Bay Area and essentially find an artifact that uh, he wants to use in order to, you know, it's a powerful artifact. Of course he wants it. He's a weapon manufacturer. And so essentially, yeah, he, he, he hires you to come, come to the Bay Area. And that's, those are kind of the missions that you go on and the things that you do. And this is part of the story mission, a story mission that he's on. We have this long group of story missions with these dramatic cutscenes that you can see that tell a story of various characters that you will, that you will meet. They're not just characters that you go to and I want you to pick my apples, you give them back and then they go away. You actually evolve, they evolve over time as you play with them. Cool, let's watch this cutscene for a second. Looks all fancy. They merely did not want me to leave once they discovered I could mend their implant malfunctions. What were you doing here in the first place? I heard about this Joe Teach person. I wanted to find out if his return was true. To protect you. I'm glad you're okay. We best exit. There are more cybernetically optimized miners on their way. Give you a better look at our character. Yep, the player characters uh, figure prominently in all of the cutscenes that we have. And is there any dialogue from the player cutscene, or is it everyone else? It's pretty much everyone else. What you can see here is one of the characters is actually part of the mission. So you fight alongside these characters as well. They're not just, I want you to do this, go and do it. They actually come with you and help you out, or you need to protect them, or whatnot. So they, they are an integral, integral part of the storyline and the gameplay. So our character, if you look at the bottom left, has a, a few abilities. What are those, and what class is he? Well, he, right now, I don't know the exact one. Can you hit the one for me real quick. Yeah, so he's got overdrive, and essentially his character 
when activating this does much more damage. You can see that when he, uh, when he hits somebody, they glow, and that is essentially just causing huge amounts of damage. And later on, you can put like ego units, like we were talking about earlier, ego points. You can put those into that power and upgrade it more, or we have other areas you can decide to uh, diversify that power. Um, and, but we also have things like we have cloak, which is invisibility. We have we have uh, blur, which is running really fast. And then we have this thing called decoy, which is kind of interesting. When you activate it, a hologram of you comes out and runs straight ahead of you and all the enemies see you, that that hologram as you. Even in the competitive uh, that we have, the competitive matches, when it runs out to all the other players, it looks like you, including the nameplate up top. So it really fools people. And right now you can pick up a sniper rifle on the right, sitting on the, on the rail, it was on the rail. There it is, right in front of you to the right. So we also, again, like that, uh, that minigun that he had, this is a super sniper rifle. And so you can basically take these guys off while he's protecting the, uh, the other characters that he had just uh, had in that cutscene. You can see that he's basically one-shotting these guys. But again, you know, limited ammo, uh, can only use it for so long, so he wants to be pretty effective with it. How's, how's the, how's the uh, sniper rifle feel? Um, it's pretty powerful, actually. There's not a, not a lot of sway or anything with it. Um, yeah. You don't have to hold shift to uh, hold your breath or anything? No, no, it's uh, very, very efficient. Oh, um, you shot the barrels in front did, of yourself. Yeah. I, no, I think he's lobbing grenades. Yes, at there's, me. A, there's an enemy in the distance that's lobbing grenades. Yeah. I happened to hit the two explosive barrels right next to him. That just did a massive amount of damage. Now, the other thing to note here is we have different areas on the enemies that can cause more or less damage. So if he's hitting people in the head, particularly with a sniper rifle, the head will actually explode and they'll instantly die. So it's really effective for him to really kind of try and hit those hot spots. For most humanoids, it is the head. There you go, just blew him up. So uh, obviously we're seeing a pretty action-packed segment here, but um, being sort of an MMO on the side, does is there any downtime spent crafting or doing any other stuff that people typically associate with MMOs? Well, while you do get uh, various materials that you can use uh, at different types of merchants, we don't have a sit down and craft kind of system. Uh, you basically are collecting these minerals to trade in with merchants. But we do have things, uh, you get a vehicle from the very beginning, a quad, and you can decide you want to go on these different challenges, which for the quad in, in particular, it's races, which are not necessarily combat oriented. So you can go on the, uh, around these courses and try and get a best time. And we track you know, all the players' best times. You try and get number one, number three, and we award you with um, you know, gold, silver, bronze, as well as some specific items or weapons uh, based on your performance. Okay. Awesome, and we're seeing just constant loop, loot being dropped. Uh, is fat loot a pretty big part of the game? Oh, absolutely. That's a huge part of this game. We have tons and tons of different weapons you can get. You can get different shields. You can get different grenades, different types of grenades. We have flashbangs, which blind your enemy. We have something called a goo grenade, which essentially puts this bubbling goo underneath uh, enemies and slows them down and causes damage. And so, yeah, and, and we have different shields that will react differently when you get hit. So we have, we have a ton of different weapons that you're constantly upgrading over time. And you can decide, you know, I want to be a sniper now, and so I'll increase my sniper skill through use, but now I decide I want to be an assault, and I can start playing with the assault rifles, and, and that'll, that'll uh, get better and better over time. So we really kind of reinforce the, the type of loot that we have and the amount that we have. Cool, and there's also a vehicle, which, wow, that was perfect timing. Um, can you upgrade your vehicle at all? Uh, right now, it's really just um, cosmetic upgrades. Uh, but we do have some perks that uh, we have certainly discussed that will allow you to, to change how the vehicle functions to some extent. Uh, and, uh, and we're only showing you the quad right here. In, uh, in the competitive game, whether it's the open world competitive game or in our competitive maps, we have multiplayer vehicles. So I can jump in as the driver, the passenger can be the rocket launcher guy. We have a guy on the back with a, you know, with a heavy you know, machine gun. So we have a bunch of different types of vehicles even outside the quad. Awesome. Now, you, you mentioned that you're able to get different skills and abilities and weapons. How important is your actual starting class, or is that more of just a starting point? It's, it's primarily a starting point. So you'll have some advantage using that power or using those weapons. But again, as you get more and more ego points, you can decide to spend those how you want and totally diversify your character. Awesome. And uh, so you mentioned the competitive side. Can you talk a little bit about that, even though we can't really easily show it off right now? Yeah, we have two types. Um, 
One is essentially, you know, we have these competitive maps. So you join a queue, and by the way, when you join a queue, you don't have to sit on a menu. You can join a queue and you can go out and continue fighting, doing your missions, and it'll notify you when the queue is ready, and then you can decide to queue into that, into that competitive map. The other one that we showed you guys earlier called Shadow War is, is an open world competitive uh, type of gameplay. So essentially what we do is you, you start it, you automatically get put into a uniform on one side or another, and uh, collection points or basically capture points are spawned over the existing map. And the more and more players that join, the more and more of these capture points we, we put on the map. So it can grow and increase in size the more players that you play. The cool thing is, is that you never see a loading screen, you just all of a sudden see these capture points that the people who didn't, who decided not to play Shadow War do not see, they can watch you, they can watch you fighting each other. And could, they, could they help by fighting like the enemies in the environment? They can, and that's, that's something else. Uh, even though you're in a Shadow War, all the enemies are still there. All the enemies in the environment are still there. So you have to make a decision on, okay, I can get a sneak on, on these players over here, but these enemies are going to start getting pissed off. So do I take out the enemies first and move on to the players? But as you said, people who decided not to play the Shadow War can still take out those enemies and may, may, may be doing it because that's part of their mission. Awesome. And uh, so when is the game coming out and what are people going to be able to get it on? Uh, it's coming out in April 2013 and they can get it on Xbox, PS3, and PC. And they can watch a TV show, right? Yes, and the TV show is coming out two weeks after we launch this game. Awesome, cool. So yeah, be sure to check out more about this on GamesRadar.com and PCGamer.com.